looking oh yeah pretty brown that's what we like to see for the yellow belly mad sandstorm it's epic wish I could put the sandstorm uh, music in the background but I'll just get copyrighted If the wheels were going around, you'd swear that truck was moving. Looks like the beach is going past. Man, it's definitely a nor'wester though. Holy hecka. Well, Hope there's still paint left on the car. It's going to be sandblasted. Man, that was uh, pretty epic. We got about 80. So, just heading out the mouth now. So, uh, yeah, check this out. Big tides, big puddles. You can see where all the settlement is here. It's a nice puddle here to get the old stuff off the bottom of the car. Oh, there's one there as well. Oh, oh yeah, it's good times. Okay, so the mahi is done. It is still hissing down outside. So we've got about 82 flounders split between three families. Uh, big one, big one, big one. Small one, small one, small one. I'm going to fill up these out. There will be some diamonds here I'll probably keep for whole. Um, I do love myself a pan fried flounder, but uh, today this wee video, it was so windy at the beach we can't, um, I couldn't I couldn't bloody record it. It was literally a sandstorm, as I said I would have put that, uh, that music video in there if I wouldn't get copyrighted. But we will hit the chopping board, hit the knife, got these awesome knives here, I bought an ITM EH ball, and um, cool wee knife set. And yeah, we'll get into it. Alright, uh, some of my earlier videos I touched on this, but um, yeah, you've got some beautiful big flounders here. So we'll grab, grab a nice big yellow belly here, obviously yellow, and you get two different types of flounders down here. You also get sole, but uh, that's your, your diamond flounder, it's a lot thinner. I mean, sometimes you've got to have a good look at these and think, do I even take that home? But um, these yellow bellies, geez, they're about an inch thick, so when you do fill it a flounder, you can see there's a line right down the center of it. So it's almost got its own instructions on how to fill it up. And on the back of it, it's got the exact same line. There's a little V in here by the rib cage. When we do the gutting here, there's a wee hole here, we slit that through, flick the guts out, you'll have the air grow down here. And there's a wee tiny, you can feel them, they go to about there. There's only about six or seven bones. You want to leave them on, so you start right up here by the edge of the jaw, and you just come down, and then you step in, and you've just missed those bones, and you go right down that parallel line, right there, boom. You just want to work your knife on a slight angle. I find a skinny knife, the skinnier the knife, the better. It doesn't need to be flexy, it doesn't need to be stiff, it doesn't really matter. Sort of start working away at that. I don't go flattering too much, so speed records aren't big on me. I just want to be able to get as much meat off as I can. So, put the knife on the back of the tail. Big beautiful fillet there. And that's not going to fit in the frying pan, but now I've got two. Other side here. Leaving that little bit of flesh, I know it's tempting, but at least I got a four year old and a five year old, and ah. peace of mind is a good thing. Now, I'm not going to put the knife all the way through here because I know. Mama! 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 Oh. <laughs> okay. One second, Boaster. You do it. Alright, so I'm going to put the knife in the centre and I'm going to peel this <laughs> off with my thumb. And there's the row. I love the row, especially smoked. Beautiful. That's a fillet to me. So that just peels off and you can see it actually, it does eat into the meat. Some people keep these, some people don't. I mean, Jesus, if you if you threw back everyone with a row, you'd probably not get a feed. But even that's a big fillet and you cut it on the angle and you get two. No more. The other side here, lock your thumb on that fin. That gives you a wee bit of a handle. Just like you would when you gut it into that cavity. You follow that line all the way down, working away here. It's 
Sorry if my hand's getting in the way. God, I got a good message being the camera lady. Look at that. Another row there. Caviar. Knife through. These two fillets here, I find the ribcage fillets are probably the harder two. I mean, there'll always be someone out there that'll say, oh, that's not how you do it, or this is how you do it better, but this isn't how you do it. This is how I do it. So I've come down there, wipe by the cheek so I don't miss anything. If it is a turbot or something really big, there's a big scallop of meat here, but geez, I haven't caught a turbot in Southland since I was a little kid. Just working along that. Knife on the tail, pull that out. If you see here, every single one of those lines is a bone. So you can see through that fish. I've missed a little bit there. Oh, but geez, I'm no Gordon Ramsay. So we've got the fish here. We wee bit of an inspection, there's a bone there. You ain't gonna get them all. But that's that whole quality control thing. Any any father, anyone out there doing any filleting will know that. You got that beautiful big fillet. Smack it on the angle. Now I've got two. That's all I'm gonna show you guys because I've got a lot to do. All blacks kick off in about one hour. As I said, we've got about 24 there. You're allowed 30 per person per day. Don't be greedy. Get a feed. Feed, feed your friends, feed your family. And um, I know we're still in this COVID world, but uh, get out there, build up those endorphins naturally, and try and forget about what's going on in the world at the moment if you get a chance, and just appreciate each moment, like being at the beach, or being in the bush, or whatever, so, hey, kia ora we'll see you on the next one.